Hey, everybody, and welcome once again to our weekly ecosystem office hours. I am your host, Jinx, and we are joined, as always, by some of the best and brightest in the pocket ecosystem. Uh, we've got some interesting things to go over today, but before we get into that, let's uh, check in with some of our principals here. Fred, Gabby, y'all got any announcements on the uh, group side? I'm pressing all the wrong buttons. Um, yeah, I have a brief announcement. Um, last week, uh, in an effort to kind of refine our gateway and uh, ensure that we are um, being cost effective, uh, we experimented with turning off and deprecating the Seoul and Sydney regions. Um, that was a success. Uh, actually, latencies were down across the board. Um, so we ended up deprecating those uh, regions fully. And this week, looks like I dropped for a second. Um, that was a success. Uh, we'll, we'll be moving forward this week and we already have, uh, deprecated the, or turned off routing to the Mumbai and Madrid regions. So now we are at a total of 13 regions. Uh, and we'll continue to evaluate this. Um, uh, I don't think that we have a specified target in mind, but um, we're carefully monitoring metrics and changes in the network behavior as we make these decisions. Got it. Nice. Is this related to uh, the, the talk last year about um, fewer regions could actually potentially have better QoS? Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we've been wanting to get to it when it made sense. Uh, and now makes sense. Um, and uh, yeah, we're just kind of experimenting and seeing where uh, where things pan out. There's there's going to be a nexus point, I think. Um, and and really fine tuning this experiment has been part of how we've been approaching it. So uh, yeah, we're eager to learn as we go. Got it. Well done, Zach. Any uh, announcements from the uh, PNF side of the house? Uh, a couple of them. Uh, we have our builders call tomorrow, which I think there's some overlap here with people. So um, definitely join us for that. We made a bunch of changes to sockets, and I'm going to kind of aggregate that and put it into the forums. But um, just letting people know that the mechanism is evolving. And we're just trying to be uh, as permission light as we can while being responsible with funds. So looking for any feedback people have there. Um, what else? Uh, the metrics dashboard for the community stuff is finally ready, so I'm going to make a, an announcement about that later today. Um, definitely check it out. Let's figure out what other things should be in that dashboard for you know, transparency and ease of understanding where everything's at. One, one really interesting note is um, you know, we have a lot of funding left in the ERA budget, and we're coming to the end of January here. The ERA ends in March. Um, so we have a lot of funds to do some really interesting things. And so if people do have ideas, I know that's an old mechanism. We're talking about revitalizing that. Um, I think kind of to bridge the gap between what labs could be and what we want, which is, you know, communities ability to make an RFP. Um, so I'm going to, yeah, I'm looking into that. And if people have ideas or if people want to weigh in on that, I, I would be very open to having those conversations. Um, and there's a lot of era budget left, like I said. So let's put it to good use. And uh, I made one last announcement in the um, from Pocket Scan. So there was a, an announcement from um, Jorge or George. I'm not sure actually, but um, on geo meshing, Jorge. Yeah. So if that applies to any of you all, which it might, um, definitely check the announcements. I think that's it for me. Fantastic. And uh, I didn't see a lot of uh, traction on the uh, labs conversation, so it seems like that was a sounds nifty, but uh, not really uh, much appetite for uh, digging into it as a concept right now. So, you know, the idea is out there. If anybody wants to chew on it, I'm, I'm happy to talk about it. Yeah, well, I actually sponsored uh, Spawn, whatever the word is. There were a lot of good conversations at PNF about what that means and like what it actually was trying to be. Um, yeah. So if nothing else, you know, it's definitely going to bring back the ideas concept. And the ability for the community to like, I think we have this odd gap between like, hey, I'm going to open a socket and try some stuff. And then what do I do afterwards? Like, do I wait for an RFP? And so maybe having this in between where you've done a socket, you're getting paid to do some cool um, or interesting work. And now you want to do some bigger project. You know, what's your what's your next step there? And I think we have. Right. 
Um, yeah, we have that. Yeah. And, and I think also I just one wanted of the to call out important is uh, the and I, and I tried to make sure that that was clear in the the um, the forum post itself. Uh, these ideas need the freedom to fail, but they also need oversight, right? So it's one of those things where it needs to be like a GitHub that's getting committed to from the very first line of code, so that it's all being built in public and succeed or fail. That's all visible and transparent to the DAO community. Yeah, I completely agree. And, and then it brings up the question of like, what's PNF's role within all this too? And it's like, the, the thing I struggle with right now is we have a lot of either new people or junior people who are interested and excited to get involved, but they also need to work on some of their actual skills, right? And so yeah. how much responsibility do I have or does the community have to help them be, you know, like good workers, quote unquote, and understand the pieces that you might learn at like your first office job um, versus do we have the time as a team of like five people at the foundation to shepherd along people who need, need that help. And that's really like, that's my tension right now is how many junior people can I help? And is that a good use of my time? And is a good use of funds that I'm getting paid to work for at PNF. And so there is a little tension there. And if people want to, you know, if people have ideas around it, I'd, I'd love to hear it. I am deferring that conversation a little bit more towards the new uh, citizenship cred, um, because I think that will give us a mechanism for um, kind of getting people up to speed before we start giving out grants and work. So it's kind of like a baseline you have to qualify for. Whereas right now there, there just isn't that mechanism for saying you understand what pocket is, you understand how to work. Maybe you have a reputation somewhere, but you don't right now. Beautiful. Cool. Any other thoughts or questions on those points? All righty. Well, in that case, uh, Shane's got some updates for us about Node Wallet and uh, providing some uh, SDK development resources to the community with that. So I'm going to hand the mic over to him. Hey, thanks, Jinx. Yeah, so we, uh, uh, over the past uh, basically month and a half or so, uh, two months, we've been working on a SDK for uh, Node Wallet. Uh, so that basically the Pocket ecosystem has a SDK that they can use to interact with the wallet um, and do a whole bunch of new kind of features and capabilities uh, within the Pocket ecosystem. And so, uh, yeah, really excited about this. Um, let me uh, uh, let me take a little or here. Let me. I'm going to share a few links right now in the uh, in the chat, um, and let me also. Okay, it looks like npm isn't. Uh, uh, they're I, I guess they're trying to update their uh, uh, caching right now because the readmes aren't showing up at least for me. Um, so maybe it's showing up for other people. But uh, here is. The uh, let's see. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll have to. I'm not sure why npm isn't showing the readme right now. Uh, sometimes it just takes a little time for it to cache it. Um, we did just have a commit earlier. Uh, npm right just sometimes does that where it doesn't show. Them. Okay, so you do a Control Shift R in order to uh, refresh. Oh, okay, there we go. Nice. Yep, just needed the hard refresh. Okay, perfect. Uh, here, yeah, let me quickly just show my screen so I can give a brief look at what the uh, SDK will enable. All right, everyone able to see? Yep. Fantastic. Yeah, so uh, really what this is, is this is a way for folks to interact with the uh, with Node Wallet um, and ultimately interact with the Pocket ecosystem in a super streamlined way uh, by having this SDK. When we when we had to build uh, when we built Node Wallet originally, Send Wallet mm -hmm. had some APIs uh, baked into them for you know using or interfacing with their wallet, and so we added all those APIs 
into node wallet itself but it was still a lot of kind of tedious manual work to uh really be able to utilize those apis and there was also limitations on what those apis can do uh and so anyways pnf uh wanted to kind of make the wallet a whole lot more usable and so they commissioned us to then build out this sdk you can really do uh, a lot of really cool things with this. Um, you can see a bunch of basic uh, commands here. Some of these were kind of uh, some of these APIs were from the original Send Wallet uh, implementation, uh, but then we've also added a bunch of them ourselves uh, to create a whole lot more capabilities. An interesting one here, and one that I think is super important for folks uh, in the ecosystem, is actually a staking. Uh, parameter now, uh, or a staking API. So now you can use the SDK to do non-custodial staking directly from your own website. So every staking provider can have a, you know, connect to uh, connect to node wallet uh, button, and then they can immediately right there, their user could do a staking transaction uh, and everything is pre-populated into, uh, into the transaction. Uh, and the provider can do all that themselves. So a lot of really cool things. Um, it also has the ability to uh, do a lot of the PocketJS um, APIs as well. So you can do just regular like get balance or you know get block all these other normal calls that you normally use with the Pocket Art uh, the PocketJS. You can now do just through the wallet itself. So you don't have to. Uh, so if someone's just getting started for the first time and they want to be able to add a pocket integration, they don't need to have both, you know, pocket JS and node wallet to do, uh, to do basic things. You could actually just use the node wallet SDK and get a lot of basic pocket functionality and read, uh, you know, a bunch of things from the chain if you need to, depending on what you're, uh, you know, what you're needing to use the wallet for. So a lot of really cool things. Um, yeah, we have this. Uh, obviously, it's all open source, and uh, we have it here in NPM. We also have a React SDK. So uh, specifically for people that are building their front ends using React, we have a uh, this just streamlines it even more, just makes it super React friendly. Um, yeah, cuts down uh, even more of the code as well. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with that. Uh, and with that, we also have... Uh, in the React SDK is also just a standard connect a node wallet button, and you can just literally slap that into your uh, into your application or into your um, front end, and then uh, you know do a node uh, node staking call if you want. So we we basically just provide the button for the React folks that are using React on the front end to just easily have the button right there as well. Um, it's also all customizable. You can change whatever colors and do whatever you want to theme it to uh, to your front end. But yeah, that's uh, that's the basic gist of it. And just a note: you don't have to use the button. There's a connect hook you can call, but Node Wallet Connect, and then you can call the connect function directly. But the button's there for if anyone wants a branded Node Wallet button. Yep. Nice. Well, I imagine anybody who's uh offering non-custodial staking right now would uh, appreciate having a quick way to add that to their website. Thoughts, questions, feedback? Yeah, and uh, it's cool because uh, actually with some of uh, PNF's work on the governance side, um, uh, a third party has already started using the SDK uh, for some of the future uh, future DAO tooling. So that's pretty cool. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, kind of, uh, it really uh, hammers home the uh, uh, point of Node Wallet being a, an open community wallet that it's configured to allow for every Node runner to use it for their own product versus, uh, you know, uh, being tied into a specific offering. And we tried to stick 100% to the Pocket JS APIs. So if you call, you know, our pocket provider dot RPC, you have all almost all of the uh, Pocket 
JS RPC uh, methods there. The exact same parameters, the exact same results. So if anyone is used to using uh, Pocket.js, they can also go through the wallet and use the exact same API to do anything they need to with their own web application. Nice. Anybody on the call now uh, intend to use that or plug that in uh, immediately? I'll definitely check it out. Uh, looks very uh, impressive. Be a nice feature. Oh, yeah. We were talking yesterday about, uh, I guess, some of the things that would be possible with uh, the Shannon upgrade. But one of the things that stands out is how so much of the user process around staking has been kind of a giant pain in the ass and not terribly intuitive or user friendly. So uh, the more things that we can tie together and uh, help resolve that issue, the better. And connect with wallet and stake is a, a pretty straightforward and expected, you know, functionality in Web3. Yeah, uh, that was definitely a a, uh, a barrier to entry for uh, folks that would, you know, even think about integrating Pocket is it ended up being a lot of manual work to just uh, interface with Pocket and, and you know, with at least with send wallets, uh, you know, the, the few APIs that they had, um, like you couldn't do staking or anything like that. And so the benefit of having an SDK as well is it can kind of keep expanding um, without everyone having to uh, rebuild or do a lot of manual work. Um, and especially with the transition from, uh, from Morse to Shannon, anyone that uses the SDK now, uh, it'll be we'll be able to upgrade the SDK so that on their end to go from Morse to Shannon, it would be a pretty straightforward uh, upgrade process and it wouldn't require rebuilding all their stuff with all new APIs uh, because there's going to be a whole lot of changes between Morse and Shannon, obviously. And so by using an SDK, it simplifies, it's, it simplifies the updating process or literally everyone across the board that's trying to interact with Pocket. So exactly, we hope to provide a standard API. So if people write with us, we can hopefully make any changes we need to on the back end or on the wallet side to facilitate you know, the Shannon changes with staking and whatever. You know, when we'll only uh, make changes to the actual API if absolutely necessary. But if there are, we're, we're watching Shannon. We're planning to update everything immediately. So we'll be ready for that on day one. Are there any uh, wish lists or nice to haves uh, on features that y'all aren't focused on, but it would be nice uh, if other community developers were contributing? Uh, to to what specifically the SDK? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I mean, if there's any other APIs that that folks need or uh, you know are interested in. Um, we went from this perspective of basically we, we modeled a lot of this after the uh, MetaMask SDK in terms of uh, kind of what, what you can do with that. And so we modeled it after that uh, loosely. Um, obviously, it's very different with pocket and number of areas, but uh, we took inspiration from that. So, uh, yeah, if there's other APIs that uh, or functionality that that other people could see is is being useful and, and could be widely used. Really, you know, the most important part is just communicating it. So, um, like, uh, uh, at least with the wallet itself, there have been some features that have been uh, mentioned in the forum, which on our next release, we plan to release those as well, like the ability to, uh, like, hide or delete wallets, um, you know, inside a node wallet. So there's if there's features inside a node wallet that people are interested in as well. Uh, the best thing to do is at least for now just communicate it um, and then we can fit that into our next release Yeah, the SDK itself is feature complete it uses every API that Node Wallet provides so on that end there really isn't anything to add because yeah. there's nothing else exposed from Node Wallet that can be put into it but the actual wallet itself yeah there's definitely work that can be done there there's features like Shane said specifically being able to hide wallets you don't want anymore and then eventually delete them completely if if absolutely necessary but, yep that's one thing people have brought up that we could definitely uh 
build at some point, or somebody potentially down the road could do themselves if they wanted to. It's open source. Nice. Cool. Any other questions, thoughts? Well, it sounds like everybody's pretty happy with that. I think it's really freaking cool that uh, we've we've got these resources now. So, thanks to y'all for uh, putting that in. You and bet. If we, if we don't have any other uh, questions or comments on uh, the SDK stuff, then uh, we're at the point of the call where it's uh, open. So, any uh, questions, topics, uh, things that need to be brought up, concerns uh, from the community at large. And feel free to just jump off mute and jump in uh, if you've got something to talk about. Also, if you're in a place where it's noisy, you can type questions into the chat. We'll read them out for you. Well, if everybody's a hundred percent golden and has no questions or anything to discuss, I'm happy to let y'all have a half hour of your time back. I'll let it go another minute or so and uh, see where everybody's at. Oh, one one quick note as well we did uh all these changes uh have been pushed to node wallet itself so uh, i believe node wallet is on version uh five uh 0 0.5.3 so um if you got obviously if you got it from the web store uh the chrome store um, it's version four it's version no, four three. yeah three was the previous one we pushed and then we updated okay Got it. So yeah. So, anyways, uh, it uh, the the latest version has all of the uh, SDK abilities. So um, yeah, uh, I know that at least with my uh, with my browser, everything updates automatically. So most folks should already be on it. At least I thought it was four. It might be three. Yeah. Okay, well then a reminder uh, that the builder's call is tomorrow. So if you are in any way participating in the uh, in building out this ecosystem, make sure you're on for that. And uh, for the rest of y'all, I'll see y'all next week. Same time, same channel. Thanks. Can you stick around for a second? Sure. Anybody else can too. Um, thank you. Appreciate the call. Um, honestly, I'm just wondering, so we have your call every week, builders call and community call. And I'm wondering if, um, if you have thoughts on combining the builders call and the node runners, I just, I'm feeling like there's a lot of calls every week. Um, I don't know what your take on it is. <laughs> I mean, I've asked specifically about this call multiple times and if people thought it was necessary and, uh, overwhelmingly people say yeah and it's because of the mm -hmm. sort of wide open nature of it the fact that it's not tied to any one particular aspect of the ecosystem uh, so you know i don't know i'm certainly yeah. open to thoughts on it <laughs> yeah i mean does anybody else have a thought like i'm just i'm trying to make it so that way we're not asking people to show up four times a week for a call that repeats stuff which i don't feel like we do repeat things um but i'm just wondering if segmenting is helpful necessary anybody got thoughts or opinions would you like one less meeting or do you like that we have these hi I, i'm derek I, is my mic working hey derek yes, your mic is it. working hey, sorry about that shane yeah i just wanted to offer the new contributor perspectives um and kind of help us start the conversation at the beginning could you give a one-liner definition of the purpose of each of the calls because I genuinely don't know. I'm still getting my bearings. Yeah, I can I can try. And I think this is part of the vagueness of it. So we have our community call, 
which happens every other Thursday. And that community call feels very like one directional, like what's going on at PNF and kind of like an announcement to the community of what's going on and what they need to be aware of. So it definitely feels like almost like a top down. Um, these ecosystem calls that are every Wednesday, these are, you know, it's, it's a lot more open. Anybody can talk, anything can happen. Jinx, you run this and have been running this for years now. And so it's supposed to be, I think, a little bit more of an informal, like, let's have a discussion and see what people have on their minds in a place where I think ideally more people feel comfortable to speak up. And then the other call is the builder's call. And that happens every Thursday opposite the community call. And that's intended to be like anybody who's building on the protocol or anybody who wants more information about what's going on um, with the protocol th team or technical stuff, they kind of join that call and um, you can get updates on what's going on with Shannon and the progress. Now, last week we had Olshansky come on this call and give an update on the progress. And um, I'm trying to get sockets, which are also people receiving grants, a little more involved in what's going on with the protocol. So I'm just feeling like maybe it is a little bit redundant to have the builders call separate from this call. Um, and that's why I brought it up. The biggest difference between this call and the other calls is um, there's no specific agenda outlined. And aside from me lightly hosting, um, there's no one in charge of the call, so to speak. <laughs> so uh, it is more like a, an open office hours type chat where you have access to a number of the, the engineers and builders in the ecosystem and, and governance folks and, and uh, you know, uh, company uh, providers and vendors and all the rest of that so that you can basically bring any kind of a question in the ecosystem and get some mic time without uh, having to like fit it into a five minute QA session on a formal call or something like that so that's super helpful thanks so much you got it yeah I, I think i think they they probably could be combined to be honest because um yeah you're you're completely right in terms of there's either going to be a lot of repeating um or uh yeah, or something will be mentioned in, in, in one call that would be beneficial for the other call. So I, th I think because that's kind of the nature of how these calls operate, I would say just kind of combining them would would make sense. Um, the builders call, a lot of builders are already here um, and already, you know, uh, involved in, in, in this call already. So it's, it is a lot of the same audience already. I guess the question that that exactly would be is, is the builders call something that is agenda driven? Because if it is, then it's not a good match for merging. Uh, maybe well, we could say that uh, we could have to like two builders calls. This one's a bit more free. And like the other builders call is like bi-weekly. This happens every week. So this could be more like a, like a, like a open builders call. And then we have to bi-weekly structured builders call with the protocol team uh which is um obviously like a bit like like you guys were saying has an agenda sort of thing this one doesn't have an agenda but like um it would be nice if we had like more discussion around like what's being built showcasing like sockets and and that stuff on like a weekly basis because like not everyone has time to check the forums, not everyone has time to read the updates. Like it'd be nice to on a, a weekly basis, like have just sort of the people doing sockets like jump in and like just say like, Oh, this is what I've done this week sort of thing and and whatnot. Um or the people doing pops as well, sort of thing. And then on the bi weekly actual build is cool. We'll do the like structured like with the protocol team, like oh, this is like what we're building. Like this is, uh, like we do presentations, demos, that sort of thing, and um, we can really uh, have it be a bit more formal. And this one would be a bit less formal, but this one would be where would the, the socket receivers and pop receivers would like show off what they're doing, sort of thing. I think, I, I I guess, one one point of reference that I'm thinking of is the fact that we we do kind of have some structure 
uh, if someone has something specific to to present, um, you know, I mean, granted, my presentation just now with the SDK was really kind of off the cuff, and we, you know, we just finished it basically this morning, and so just wanted to kind of put it out there. But um, but you know, we've had we've had people do full on presentations. Um, I think I think back to Nodi's you know full gateway kind of presentation, what exactly they're building, and all that kind of stuff that happened on uh, this call, if I remember correctly. Um, but anyways, so I could see there being some mixture of of uh, of them, but I do get what you mean in terms of, uh, you know, if there's going to be a hard structure uh, and a very particular structure to the, to the builder's call, um, and it needs to have that kind of structure, then it would probably benefit to, to have them separate. But if the builder's call could be a little less, if it doesn't need to have that structure, I guess, then I could see them merging. But... Yeah, all, all fair points. Cool. Any other thoughts about that? Silence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it's that. Always, I mean, I appreciate Yeah. It feels like it's always the same people. I'm like, somebody else jump in and give me an opinion. I was just like, what does Shane, Harry, and Zach want? You know, like, <laughs> which I guess constitutes a DAO. There's three people, but um, we have officially reached yeah. Quora. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. Well, I, I'm going to figure that out. Harry, I might message you because I, I like your point that we do need some structure with a builder's call, but. I guess my thought is, could the structure be done in 15 minutes at the start of the node runners call, which then goes into a more open forum? Because not that it's a lot of work for me, but I just like we're asking for people's time and attention multiple times a week. And um, mm. maybe people love that. But I, I'm sitting here thinking, like, wouldn't you all be happier if you just had to show up once a week to get everything you needed? And then... Um, you know, you can come to the ecosystem thing if you have things you want to bring up or um, the way I'm thinking about it is because the Thursday calls end up on YouTube. If you don't show up in person, you don't actually miss that much. You can watch that video later, whereas these ecosystem calls, like if you're not here, the the point of them is that you're not going to be able to participate in the conversation. So yeah. just trying to think through that. If anybody has opinions, yeah, just DM me or throw them somewhere so that way we can keep thinking on it and we'll iterate over the next couple of months, I think. Yeah, Ian mentioned in chat there used to be times when this call can go all the way past an hour, but it's been a little bit quieter through the entire bear. We definitely do have those calls sometimes, and especially I think that's most common when there is either a complicated protocol change being proposed or a contentious governance change. Uh, and in both cases, this has been the call where people just sort of live debate those things in real time and we just let it go you know yeah i think it would be interesting if if we thought about um like since uh shaman is coming closer and closer to tesla um once that like actually happens like having people be in this call engaged in the discussion because ultimately like that will be participating in the test net and, and whatnot. It would be good to have that sort of like long open discussion about something um, on a regular basis. Um, and then also have to like bi weekly. I think, I think the, I, the idea of having like an open forum is good where when there's something to talk about, I think maybe bringing more of the builders cool stuff into this call will be beneficial because like every two weeks like you look at other channels they do the week like a weekly tour like a weekly sort of like protocol uh dev team update sort of thing i think that that that's a very important thing just to be open and transparent it's like uh um as long as as long as the timing of the call is correct you'll get like a good turnout um uh, like time zone wise and then we can make sure that this one shows up on youtube as well and then that way bam you got everything on on youtube and uh those people that don't fit the time zones can uh can uh, make their way sort of thing 
just to add to um, what, what you just said, um, the fact that we can debate the proposals here uh, in the past has been extremely valuable. And I'm sure once we continue moving forward, um, it's going to be a good forum to have for everyone that does join these calls. So I am in favor of keeping this. And I know that after uh, Shannon Testnet goes live, a lot of us will have questions that it would be great to be able to ask uh, some of the, the you know, more engineering focused folks like you, Harry and Ian and such, um, you know, direct questions about implementation, because we've had a lot of theoretical conversations about what might be possible. Um, but you know, actually having a, a senior engineer on the line while we're asking things, you know, will probably save us all a ton of time. Yeah, that's definitely an ideal state in my mind, especially when it comes to testnet. We've been working on some great documentation, but um, uh, ultimately, it's uh, like where the people building it, but we're not we're not necessarily all going to be running nodes. So um, it would be nice to have like that open open discussion between the people using the protocol, the people who are build the protocol, and the people who are going to be building on top of the protocol outside of the protocol team um all in one place like on a weekly basis and i think with the um with, with the more structured call being separated that's nice and then having the open call will be uh, a good idea as well because i'm assuming there's going to be a lot of, a lot of questions um uh pers personally i know there's going to be a lot of questions so uh it'd be nice to have that like uh less formal uh approach uh but still focused on like the the building and and uh and and whatnot beautiful i'm down i mean it's you know i've been running this call for shit two years now and you know happy to keep it going for as long as people want it so Okay. Well, it seems like we've reached the end of that second stage of a uh, um, uh, conversation around the call structure itself. Uh, oh, I, I've got a DM. Is it too late to ask this? Well, I mean, shit, you could have just typed that out in chat and we'd have already been asked it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to type word or actually I'm just going to copy and paste word for word. Uh, into the chat that way everyone can see the exact question from breezy um i wonder if pnf has taken the liberty of reaching out to all the centralized rpc providers like quicknode chain stack etc and ask them how can pocket network help them in any way to be more successful um i wonder if that's i mean is that is that within the purview of the protocol? I'm, I'm not sure if that would fall to gateways versus protocol. Zach, any thoughts on that? Can you repeat the question for me? I'm sorry, I got distracted. Yeah, it's in the chat on the, on the side if you want to just uh, uh, take a look at that real yeah, quick. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely gateway related, right? Um, yeah, we haven't asked the community. That's one of those it. things where it's it's difficult to to tell sometimes where one entity stops and the other begins, you know? Yeah, yeah, and like, okay, let me let me just take a step back here and say, like, one hundred percent, if community. I think the thing that we're trying to do at PNF very specifically is like, how do we continue to empower people who want or think about things like this to go ahead and make it happen? Um, and I know we're not there yet, but the, the, like you're saying, Jinx, the barrier between what is, what is the protocol and what are the gateways is like a little bit gray and nebulous right now, but this definitely feels like 
you know, like Grove is doing things, nodies are doing things because um, that's their business. And then the protocol is not in the business of, I guess, getting getting RPC clients like this. I don't know. It's a little, I'm going to ramble here. So I don't actually have an answer. I think this kind of falls under, once once Shannon comes out, this could be a beautiful, a beautiful sort of uh, getting them to become a gateway sort of thing on Shannon um, and utilize Pocket that way. And that would be probably like through PNF outreach, I imagine. Uh, I, I don't see uh, general people, like community members tweeting at them would make like any real difference having like an active organization would uh, like PNF, like they're, they're a, an organization uh, outreaching to them saying, look, come take advantage of the uh, the nodes of like the suppliers that we we have um build your gateways using our sdk sort of thing um once once we're like we could maybe maybe even start that com- like conversation now um i realized that the gateway kit that nodies have built is kind of like is coming out at this at the same time that we're making uh the the Shannon uh, like SDK sort of thing, so there's a bit of overlap. But uh, getting the conversation started with these um, like quick no chain stack, like the, the people mentioned in that that quote you posted, Jinx. Uh, getting the conversation started there with through PNF would be a kind of uh, a cool thing to do to get um. Uh, to get uh, like more gateways um, with existing clients uh, using the pocket protocol and not necessarily being clients themselves of Grove or Nodes. Um, that would be an interesting thing. Cool. Any other thoughts, comments on that? Yeah, this might might be a case of like chicken and egg too, um, right? Like a lot of these things are are things that we plan to do, and it's just again you look at a small team and and there's only so many things we can do at a time. So um, prioritization is just different right now versus once once the test net comes out, um, I think we'll we'll be able to shift our focus and priorities to you know to work on more of these very specific pieces. Trying to get back to the chat here. Yeah, and we, you know, as far as biz dev goes, like Dermot's the closest thing we have to biz dev. And so we are reliant on the gateways to be doing a lot of the outreach for things like this. So it might actually be a, a good art question, Breezy. Is like, what, is, what is Grove doing uh, for stuff like this? But we're seeing announcements, so it's not like they're, they're not slacking, that's for sure. Big facts. Okay, cool. If there aren't any other uh, comments uh, about that, then we'll go ahead and wrap it there. And uh, always uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, one-on-one DM or whatever if you have any other questions or something that uh, you know you may have wanted to comment but weren't sure if you were allowed to in the the main meeting or whatever else. But uh, chats, so kind of like direct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, the uh, the chat window does stay up even when the calls close. So, you know, feel free to dig back through things that were set. But for now, we're going to wrap it up here. And I will see y'all next week. Same time, same channel. Thanks, Jinx. Thanks, Jinx. Appreciate Thank you. It. Thank you, Jinx.